my dudes, it's Demi, and today we are at one of my favorite theme parks of all time, Busch Gardens Williamsburg. Dark Coaster, the brand new indoor family coaster has finally opened, and we are gonna be riding it today along with as many rides as possible. We are here for two days and we wanna do it all. We'll learn a lot along the way, and hopefully this video will help you decide if you should take a trip to Busch Gardens in Virginia. So now let's get into it. Let's do Dark Coaster and Busch Gardens Williamsburg and let's go get into some hijinks. So it took forever to get into the park. So we are just kind of walking all the way into the back of the park where the Germany land is, where the Dark Coaster will be. Right now we're walking through Italy. This is Escape from Pompeii. I absolutely oh, yeah. love this ride. So Busch Gardens Virginia is actually rated the number one most beautiful park in the US for theme parks. And there's a lot of different paths, but it's all so manicured beautifully. I mean, look at this, it's beautiful. I do wish I took an allergy pill though, because there are so many plants and flowers. It is killing me. Here's more of Italy. It's so beautiful. They have Italian music playing and there is Pantheon that opened last year. I'm super excited to ride that later. I never had a chance to ride it yet. I haven't been in this park in five years, so I'm so happy to be back. I mean, this is like the best part of Busch Gardens. I mean, the coasters are actually the best part, but it's just everything is so beautiful. Everything just looks perfect. It feels like you're in a little town in Italy. Have all the wine over here. It's just beautiful. I highly recommend downloading the app. Not only does the app provide wait times, it also can give you directions on the best way to get to certain parts of the park. You can also purchase parking, which I highly recommend doing ahead of time. And if you are coming more than one day, I highly recommend buying the multi-day parking because it will save you a lot of money. It's like $30 a day or $50 or $55 for up to seven days. So we are in Germany. Busch Gardens, Virginia is set up to be Europe. Busch Gardens in Tampa, which believe it or not, I've still have not been to, is set up as Africa. And here we are, the Dark Coaster. This ride used to formerly be Curse of the Dark Castle. It was like a 3D haunted mansion ride. I used to love it. I came here twice as a kid. It was my favorite ride. I came back in 2018 and it was down and I was so sad, but I am so happy that a new life has been reborn from this attraction. Here is the ride vehicle, their snowmobiles. Apparently this is the first North American indoor uh, ride vehicle that you have to swing your leg around. Right now we're already at a 90 minute wait. It's a 48 inch height requirement. Oh my gosh, it feels so cool to be back in this queue. And I have never seen this. Apparently you cannot be more than 77 inches tall to ride this indoor family coaster. That is crazy. Here's the plot of the ride. King Ludwig's abandoned fortress resurfaces as strange weather patterns have been recorded near the cursed castle ground. Only the bravest souls will embark on snowmobiles in this dark expedition to discover the mysterious phenomenon. Supernatural force is eminent as explorers discover that they are invading more than just a raging storm. I will be able to record the rides today. You just have to go to guest services to show them that you have everything like mounted and tightened up and then they give you this pass that you show to the people at the ride and then they can uh, give final say if the ride can be recorded or not. So hopefully we don't have any problems. I'm pretty sure we'll be okay, especially since this is a new ride. Bush Gardens also offers Quick Queue. It starts at $69.99. It depends on the day of the price. I recommend coming and seeing what the crowds are like in the park. And then if you feel like you need it, you can always add it on because like right now, this is 90 minutes because it just opened, but everything else has a five minute wait. And this is Memorial Day weekend. That was his mother on the original attraction. The original attraction starts out with the ghost of King Ludwig's mother telling people you need to get out of here my son evil super evil and then you ride through the castle things come flying at you and when I came here on my eighth grade class field trip which was my second time here literally my friends were gaslighting me into thinking that the objects were only being uh, thrown at me in 3d um, but no it was everyone they were super nice eighth graders <laughs> That trip was also when I discovered that I had curly hair because we were in DC before this and we got caught in a literal tornado. We were totally drenched and my hair dried naturally for like the first time. My mom always made me blow dry my hair because she didn't want me walking out with a wet head, that old thing. And I always had like 
frizzy, wavy hair. And like when it dried naturally and I saw these curls, I was like, well, that all makes sense. So I always think of that when I come to this park and it just makes me, I'm so grateful of being in a tornado so I know how to do my hair correctly. You excited to try Darkoaster? I'm very excited. It's very bittersweet. I really did love that original ride, but I'm super excited and I love it in Darkoaster so, so much. I hope it's super smooth and I hope it's dark and spooky, which is my specialty. I love dark and spooky. I just want to get in there already. <laughs> Well, we have hit our 90 minute mark and we're still in the same room and I have no idea how much further we need to go. So, definitely not 90 minute wait. But before you get on this ride, if you have any loose articles, it has to be put in a locker. But if you do have a small bag like a fanny pack, these can go on. Prince Ludwig of Dark Castle ascended to king in 1864 after his parents mysteriously disappeared. Soon thereafter, he emptied the royal treasury, transforming the castle into an impenetrable fortress with secret passageways and dark chambers. Believing him ruthless and insane, Ludwig's advisors tried to overthrow him. However, in a sinister twist, he threw a lavish winter festival in their honor, hosting his guests on a tour around the castle in a fleet of golden slaves. That night, a great and mysterious winter storm descended upon the grounds and the forest. The next morning, the slaves were discovered in their stalls, empty, and to this day, the castle remains strangely frozen in time. King Ludwig was never seen again. We have just hit the two hour mark and we are getting a little bit closer. I don't think they are accepting, ooh, quick queue yet. Oh, there's the ghost in the portrait. But here is the entrance to the ride. We're getting closer. So I think the reason why this ride, I think will have a pretty long wait normally is because of the ride capacity. There's only five lanes, which means only 10 people can ride at a time on the ride vehicles, which, I'm surprised they did that because that's it's gonna take up a lot of time. Also, for this ride, you have to hold on to the grab bar with both hands at all times. You cannot lift your arms up. Here we go. Here we go. Got a lap bar, nice and secure. Do you have what it takes to brave the storm? <laughs> Let's find out. Okay, so dark coaster. First of all, super dark, so that video is probably just super hard to see. Um, I will say it is a great family coaster. It has so many launches. It's kind of almost like a slinky dog dash, but like the launches are great and like goes really, really fast. Um, it's definitely not like a big extreme ride. It's kind of like a baby for Verbol Bolton, which we'll be riding later, but um, and then it's also like Space Mountain, how it's just like totally in the dark. Where the ride loses me is on the theming once you're on the ride. Because they set up this whole backstory and in the original ride, there was like a great, like you understood what was going on. And I really loved the story part, especially because this park like doesn't have any IP. Like they're just, well, they have Sesame Street, but other IP. And so they're relying on like their own stuff that they can create and I really, appreciate seeing original work like that. And, you know, it kind of just like, you get on, stuff kind of is like, you see it for a second, but there's no like audio of like, you know, what's going on, no story. It's just, all right, you're in the castle now. And, and that's kind of it. So it's, I'm a little disappointed in that sense, but it's still like super smooth. It's fun. It's about like a minute and a half. Uh, definitely don't wait two hours for it or you might not feel like it's worth it. And just remember, it is a family coaster, so it's not gonna be like Verbolton. It's, it's, it's a little more tame, but super fast and fun. And uh, I'm glad we finally got to do it. 
So we walked into, it's called New France. There's France and New France. And it's literally like two o'clock. That took so long. It took forever just to get into the park today. And then obviously to ride that ride took a long time. So we have not eaten anything all day. And we wanted to try one of their food and wine festival booths. Cooking. Yep, that's right. Bush Gardens does their own food and wine festival. It started April 27th. It runs through June 11th. So there's a few more weeks. And we're gonna try this Brazil booth out. So here is our haul from Brazil. We got the grilled sausage, and this is a baked coconut. I'm not entirely sure what to expect with this, but let's open them up and try them out. It's a chorizo. It's okay, it's not the best I've ever had, but pretty decent. And I just, I think the portion size is a little small for over five bucks, but cause they're supposed to come with like mushrooms and peppers and they really didn't, really didn't give that much of it. It's okay. Okay, so here is this baked coconut. I think it's literally just coconut that is baked, but it looks good. Literally baked coconut and like a little bit of like a cream condensed milk type thing and baked. Very tasty. Obviously, if you don't like coconut, it's not for you, but if you do, that's very good. Okay, we want to do more rides, but we're still starving. So we're going to walk through France here. There is a uh, French Quarter booth right here, but I feel like we have that all the time because of Universal. So we're going to scoot through and we'll come back to ride the Griffin later, which I cannot wait. It's an incredible coaster and so scary. So this is the Griffin. You hang there. You hang there and it's so scary. And I remember uh, when I came on my eighth grade field trip, one of the teachers was crying. I cannot wait to ride this later. I legit have no sense of direction here, so I'm so happy that the map exists and can tell us exactly where we need to go. I really also love that this park has animal experiences here too. It's just kind of like got a little bit of everything. We found the Hawaii booth. It's right as you enter. Ireland. Look how gorgeous. So right here is where the show Celtic Fire happens and it's an incredible Irish step dance show. I don't know if we'll get to it today, maybe tomorrow because we're going to be here for two days, but I always recommend seeing the show when you come. It's like the best show here in my opinion. So we got the pork slider and the Hawaiian mac and cheese. Looks good. Let's give it a try. Let's try this mac. That's good. Very cheesy nice crumbs on the top and it came out really hot which is always great so there's a piece of pineapple on this oh my god this feels like it's gonna be messy super juicy not like a ton of flavor on the meat but came out hot and has some good combination flavors of the pork and the uh, pineapple and I like how there's just like a whole slice of pineapple on there it's very good feel a lot better I was starting to get very hangry <laughs> Let's scoot through Ireland. I am so sad. There used to be a ride right over here. And back in the day, it was a 3D like motion ride like you would find at Universal. And you were like in a box and they were taking you all over Ireland. You were a little fairy. And it was like a really great adventure. And then when I came back in 2018, it, they turned it into almost like a VR experience thing. And I didn't love it as much and apparently it closed pre-COVID. I didn't even know about it. And it made me really sad. And now they use this as a hollow screen maze during Halloween. So this is Finnegan's Flyers. And you can put me on any coaster, literally any coaster. I will never ride this type of ride. Came back over into Italy because Pantheon is the other new coaster that opened last year here. And it is down right now, but the team member said that it should be up. It has not been up today, but they said that it will be up today. But there are still two other coasters here. First, we have Tempesto, which is the Magical High Drinks brand colors. Look at that, that blue and orange. And then the very scary Apollo's Chariot. Doesn't go upside down, but that lift hill is so high. I'm pretty sure it's the highest, ooh, the highest ride here and I haven't done it. I get, well, I mean, I've been here in five years. Last last time I did it, and let's just do it. Let's let's do it. I'm so afraid of this one. Lift tilts scare me, but <laughs> let's do it. Oh my gosh, I have an end seat. Oh my god, I'm so scared right now. <laughs> Oh my god, I hate it. I hate going up. 
I forgot how intense that ride is. That lift hill is so slow, and I'm pretty sure that is the highest ride in the park. And then you coast on the top for a bit, and then, oh my gosh, that is, it's a great coaster. It is so scary. I've been so used to all these launch coasters, like Hagrid's Lost Coaster, Dark Coaster. Oh my gosh, my heart's racing so bad. Okay, so I know these are my brand colors, but I still don't think I'm gonna ride this ride. I really don't like twisty, turny rides. It just, I don't wanna get sick and not be able to do anything else. So sorry, Tempesto. Appreciate that we share colors, but I'm gonna skip you today. So I guess we'll come back to Italy later for Pantheon. Just so you know, they do have some teacups here and another kid's ride called the Elephant Run. We've got a classic pirate swing ride, hot air balloons, and then you have this beautiful like little Roman garden and then in the back there's another kid's ride called the Flying Machine. It's just so beautiful in here. Okay, I am so hyped because we are going back into Germany now to ride my favorite ride here, one of my favorite rides of all time, Verbolten. So a long time ago, this used to be the Big Bad Wolf ride. They changed it and it has launches. It's themed to the Autobahn and you go through the German Black Forest and it is just such a good coaster. Like this was my favorite before Hagrid's. So this is a still a very close favorite, definitely my favorite here, and I am so excited. Here it is. We're technically in Oktoberfest, so there's Germany and Oktoberfest, France, New France, <laughs> so many, so many lands here. I am so excited. So here are the ride vehicles, super shiny. Each of them have different license plates, like that one, Fallen Rocks. This one is You'll Be Dropping. That one says wolf crossing, and that is a nod to the former Big Bad Wolf attraction. Here we go. We got the, we got the yellow one. Let's do it. Don't look back as you break the black forest. I'm so excited. Oh, it's so sweet. indoors and I, I almost totally forgot that it has the drop in it and that's why we loved it so much and this is we wrote this before we ever wrote Hagrid's which also has that drop and this drop is definitely definitely more steep than Hagrid's it's such an amazing ride and I love I love a combo indoor outdoor this is so good okay we cannot come to Bush Gardens Virginia and not head into the fest house it is so stinking beautiful and big in here this is the spot you want to come to when it rains so this is a German quick service location. I'll show you all of it tomorrow. We'll definitely come here for lunch. This is also where you can see October Zest, which is a really fun German show with singing and dancing. Even if you don't plan on eating here or seeing the show, just pop your head in here because it's such a cool place. 
there's just a ton of little shops and things to do. There's an arcade here. You can get some fun drinks here. A lot of pay to play games. It really just feels like if the Germany Pavilion in Epcot had more space and more things to do. Made it to our next ride. This is Alpengeist. Alpengeist stands at 195 feet and riders are hurled through six staggering inversions at speeds up to 67 miles per hour. And according to the Busch Gardens app, this is one of the tallest, fastest coasters in the world. Oh my God, we got the front, freaking out. Oh my God, here we go. Okay, if you know me and you know my channel, you know how I hate water rides. I hate being wet, but the Scoot is actually a very good log boom attraction. So let's head into France and hopefully not get too wet. You make me want to scoot, scoot, le scoot. Also, I just saw on the app, le scoot is only open on Saturdays and Sundays. Oh look, nobody's on the ride. Maybe that's because people don't want to get completely soaking wet and then spend the rest of their day in wet clothes at a theme park. Why am I doing this again? All righty, here we go. I'm ready. I really don't want to get that one. We're walking through France and here's this beautiful outdoor wine bar with the festoon lights. This is so, so nice. I just love that there is so much to do for adults and kids here. It really is such a great family park. So this park has a lot of animal encounters just kind of spread out throughout and we just came across the first one. Look at this wolf baby. I know that this wolf would actually kill me, but I still want to just take it home and, and keep it as a pet because it's so beautiful. Oh my God, right next to the wolf is a bald eagle. Look at this, this is amazing. Hello, baby, I'm so glad you're here. Oh, are you turning your head all the way around like the exorcist? Oh, that's that's pretty creepy, but still, you're so still glad you're here. Walking through Scotland, it's so beautiful. And then here we have the Highland Stables. Look at this beautiful baby. I love this park so much. There's more babies in the stables. And look, 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 there's a dog too. Look at that. Oh, bye baby, you're so beautiful. It's so nice to see you. I love this park, oh my God. You see me? You came over to see me? You're like, oh my gosh, who is this crazy lady? Hi. Oh my gosh, look, another big baby. Hello. Hi, gorgeous. Okay, so unfortunately Pantheon never opened today. So hopefully it'll be open tomorrow. We're exhausted. It's been a long day. We're gonna go get some dinner and be back here tomorrow. But I just wanna quickly show you where we're going to dinner because if you're visiting Busch Gardens or Colonial Williamsburg or just this general area, you need to know about this restaurant. 15 minutes from the park is Captain George's Seafood Buffet. This buffet is so good and it's literally a ship 
the buffet is a ship. How cool is that? Look how, look how big this is. But on top of it, it's just so absolutely stunning in here. Super colonial. You have colonial and revolutionary war paintings. Like it's very much colonial Williamsburg in here. Like if you're doing that type of trip, I highly recommend it. Even if you're not, I highly recommend it. I'm gonna show you the food real quick. They have hot seafood, fried seafood, non-seafood, and the best part, the crab legs and all of the shellfish. It's about 50 per person. It definitely went up in price since the last time I was here, but you do get a lot and the quality is really good. Especially just coming off covering Cape May Cafe in Walt Disney World, their seafood buffet. It's more expensive, especially if you add on for crab legs and you don't get nearly as much as you do here. I'm gonna go eat a ton of crab legs and I will see you in the morning, which will just be a few seconds for you. Welcome to day two. It's raining, but we're rope dropping. We're pretty close to the front. I don't know what rides are gonna be open. A lot of the rides here are outdoor. I know Dark Coaster's indoors, so that definitely will be open. So we'll see what a rainy day is like here in Busch Gardens too. So let's just, let's do day two. I highly recommend lining up your car about an hour before the park opens because it gets so backed up. It took us over an hour just to get into the park yesterday and we got to the park like quarter to 10 and the park opened at 10. So today we got here at nine. We were like the, at the very front when you enter and we got a closer parking spot. We didn't have to take a tram and now we're right at the front. So this is great. I know it's raining, but it doesn't seem like there's any lightning. So we'll see if Pantheon is opened or any of the outdoor coasters. Everybody kept walking to Germany to Dark Coaster, which I don't blame them. We waited two hours yesterday, but <laughs> I am, I'm hopeful, I'm hopeful they're gonna run Pantheon even in this drizzle. Let's see, I think maybe it's open. I don't see anything blocking it like yesterday. They're running it. They weren't running it at all yesterday. This is a good sign. I am so hyped. They just said they're finishing their cycles, you know, running the ride a few times, and then they're gonna open the attraction. I am so hyped for Pantheon. Today we're gonna wear the harness. It's gonna be a much smoother video, though I do love the, that you can, you know, I can turn it and you can see my reaction, but <laughs> those videos were so shaky yesterday because these rides were super bumpy, but I'm, I'm so excited, let's go. Pantheon, the world's fastest multi-launch roller coaster, harnesses the speed and strength of five of the greatest Roman gods. This record-breaking coaster stands 180 feet tall with a top speed of 73 miles per hour and features a 95 degree drop, four launches, five airtime hills, and two inversions. Here we go. I think I think I'm ready for a Pantheon in the rain. <laughs> oh my gosh, here we go. Harness the speed and strength of five Roman gods as you conquer oh my God. Pantheon. Let's do it. Oh my gosh. Oh my God. The rain hurt so bad on our face. It was it was so sharp, um, but there's nobody here. So we're gonna go ride one more time. It's so good. My pants are soaking wet. My face is probably melted off, but this was such an amazing coaster. So many great launches. You think that it like, it missed going up, but it's, then it launches backwards. This is awesome. Literally nobody is here. We're gonna take the back row this time. Let's go again. Round two. Oh my gosh.
All right, we scooted over into Oktoberfest. Nobody is waiting for Verbolton, and this is our favorite ride here. Though Pantheon, Pantheon is amazing, and I think we are fans of the back if it's raining. Um, it definitely goes faster, though the views in the front are awesome. But if we don't have to wait for our favorite ride, we're gonna ride it again for sure. So it's raining pretty bad, so we came into Fest House to get some food. First off, look how big that German chocolate cake is. We got cheesecake and cupcakes and cookies. We got salads, pizza and chicken fingers and mozzarella and uh, french fries. And they have chicken, bratwurst, knockwurst, smoked sausage, cabbage, corned beef. And we got the German platter. It comes with knockwurst, bratwurst. Uh, roast chicken and corned beef and it looks like potatoes and red cabbage. This looks so good. So good. I wish Germany and Epcot did this because you can only get the bratwurst at the quick service and if you want any other like German food you have to go to beer garden and it's like that's a whole sit down thing. It's a buffet like I don't I personally like feel like I don't need all that like this is a great platter like I wish that they had this. I don't know why they don't. I mean, and then like sometimes the festivals will have like some stuff, but not not like this. I this Germany is, I think, far superior than the one in Epcot. I will say that. So I'm not saying Beer Garden isn't great. It's great. It's a it's a really great experience with the music and whatever. But like, I just wish that there was a better quick service like this. That's all I mean. Remember when I said this is the place to come when it's raining to have lunch and time it out with the October Zest show. Here we go. After we like we were eating and thinking about the rides today, you know we only did two, but we rode Pantheon twice. Revolta was always our favorite, but now that it's gotten a little older, it's not as smooth as it used to be, and it's still a great coaster. But like Pantheon, that's definitely a hands down the best coaster here. I mean, it's so fast, it's so so fast, but it's also just like launch, launch, and just like lots of so many elements to it. It's the best ride here for sure. Invader, the wooden coaster is closed, boo! So we've walked into France, it's really coming down now, but this is a fun activity that you can do on a rainy day, or even not a rainy day. They have a French wine tasting for $16.99. It includes four French wines and a souvenir glass. And then you can take the souvenir glass and you can go to the places in Germany, Italy, and right now for food and wine also in Ireland that do wine tastings, and you can get for $12.99 instead of $16.99. All right, I'm super hyped. The Griffin in France is running, and there's no wait. The rain lightened up a little bit. I love this attraction. Let's do it. Zero minutes <laughs> for wait time. That's amazing. Three rows, 10 seats, and if you wanna be high up, 
When they hang you, you want the back row, so let's do it. Oh my god. I'm so scared. Oh my my shoe. Oh my god, I'm my shoe does not feel very tight right now. <laughs> Just do my feet like this. Oh my god, oh my god. Oh my god. Oh it's so foggy out. Oh my god, it's so foggy. Oh boy, here we go, here we go, here comes the hang. Oh god! it started raining harder when we got on but you know what there was no wait so I call it a win <laughs> back over in England where you first walk in this is the sweet shop it smells really good in here there's a lot of a lot of amazing sweets and candy donuts this is also the only place apparently in the park where you can get coffee but they do serve Starbucks coffee Look at Topiary, Oscar the Grouch, and Grover. That is amazing. So do you know that Bush Gardens and SeaWorld are owned by the same company? And they have the rights to Sesame Street. So this is the little Sesame area. And I wanted to just take a little peek at it. Forest of fun. They do have a show here, Sunny Days Celebration. That's very cute. We definitely don't need this water playground today. Everything like feels so closed down. Oh my gosh, it's Ernie. Where do we go? We got Is he hiding? He thinks he's really inflated. Oh. Hi, Ernie. I'm super rained on, but it's so nice to meet you. Have you had a really awesome day in Sesame Place? That's awesome. I don't know where he is. Oh my gosh! Hi! This is, I feel like I'm meeting the biggest celebrities of all time. Well, let's go. I love you guys so much. Can we take a picture together? Up to Ernie. Oh, I don't want to get you guys wet, so I'll stand right here. Well, that was the best surprise ever. That was really cute. I don't know why Ernie was hiding. Kind of made me feel bad, not gonna lie. <laughs> they got a little drop tower ride here. Bert and Ernie's Lock Adventure. It's like a little boat attraction. And they do have one kitty coaster here as well. I love the colors. So, I will say this park really needs more indoor attractions. I really am sad about the Ireland ride being gone because now the only like fully indoor attraction is Dark Coaster and obviously it's like brand new and it's the only thing that's probably like won't drench you so everybody's there right and so that's why the rest of the park is kind of empty so we kind of like did everything we really wanted to except for one more ride in Italy so I think we're just gonna end on Skate for Pompeii. Escape from Pompeii is a 42 inch height requirement and it's more than it seems like on the outside. Yeah, it just looks like, yep, one big drop, get wet. But the inside's really cool. It has pyrotechnics and it, the theming in there is really fun. And even me, who I hate water attractions because I hate being wet. Um, I know today it doesn't really matter at all. I would get wet for this ride because it's very, very cool. We got our own boat. Look at this. Here we go. Ooh, oh, oh boy, oh boy. Of course, as soon as we get on the ride that splashes you with water, it stops raining. Oh wow, look at the paintings on the wall. It's so perfect. The theming here is so good. It looks so real. Warning, earth tremors. Oh no.
boy. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god! Woo! Yeah, I was smart and took the middle and I didn't get wet. <laughs> Even though I'm already rained on so much. Well, my dudes, that was Bush Gardens, Williamsburg in 2023. I had a fantastic trip here. This was like an eight hour plus drive. Uh, so that's why I haven't been here in like five years. It's a bit of a trek for me, but I absolutely love this park. I think it's so beautiful. I think the rides here are just some of the most top tier attractions that you will find, especially now with Pantheon. Um, I do really like Dark Coaster. I think it's a great family attraction. I think, I just really wish that the theming once you were on the ride was a little bit better, but still really impressed by what they did with that space. And I just have just the best time. And I really do recommend taking a trip to Busch Gardens. Like, first of all, there's so much to do in like Williamsburg, you have Colonial Williamsburg as well. And it's just a really beautiful area. And I really do think that this park on its own is a destination park. I love coming here every few years and I can't wait to come back. I think that they're going to be uh, creating a new ride soon. What I heard from the grapevines. So I can't wait to come back when that would be open. Maybe before then, who knows? The world is our oyster, but I'm so happy I got to come here and experience one of my favorite parks of all time. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this. Let me know, would you come visit Busch Gardens in Williamsburg? Have you visited Busch Gardens in Williamsburg? What did you think of it? And would you come back and do you recommend it? It would help me and others that are thinking about visiting hearing your experience as well. So anyway, thank you so much for watching. If you did like the video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and hit your bell notification so you don't miss anything that goes on this channel. Follow me on Instagram at Magical Hijinks. Check out the Patreon, become a patron, get exclusive bonus content, bonus lives, help with trip planning, access to the Discord, and so much more. And you'll be helping me to continue bringing you great content like this to this channel. And until next time, my dudes, I hope you guys can do some hijinks very, very soon. Have a bye.